Welcome to the video for the Automoblox block windshield. This is for the T9 version of the Automoblox and we're going to be making a windshield. It's going to look pretty cool. You should have 5.2b introduction to CAD modeling skills open and it looks something like this. And this shows you here some of the tools we're going to be using to make this part. So let's go ahead and get started with part four. These are the dimensions that we're going to be focusing on for the first part and everything we need is pretty much here. I should show you what it's going to look like when you're done and that's going to look something like this. It's not done, this is just part one, but it's going to look like this when we're finished. So let's go back to our instructions and you should read through these so you can get a, more information about why I'm doing the things that we're do I'm doing and, and why you're going to repeat those things. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Switching over to part and inventor. We're going to do a 2D sketch in the XY plane. And as you can see, we're going to start with this dimension right here. This 3.040. And that's just the line. 3.040. Enter. And that's very good. I'm going to click front so a little bit better view of what we're doing. Now we need some arches here. These are arcs. Another arc, another arc. And it shows us what the size of those arcs are. They have a radius of 6, a radius of 0.4, and another one that's a radius of 6. Now that's awesome. We could draw arcs, but we need a second point. So we need to add this point and this point to our part file so that we know where to end our arcs at. Well, this one here is 2.550, just over two and a half inches from the right corner, right lower right corner, and about one inch above the lower right corner. This one here is 0 0.640, a little over half an inch above the lower left corner, and it's in just a teeny bit. 3.010 is only three hundredths smaller than the overall dimension. So there's a very slight angle here. Let's get to it. We're going to be making points. So you've made lines and circles and rectangles before. You've done fillets before. So let's create a point. And I'm just going to lay them in here. If you just take a glance at this picture, why don't you just go ahead and guess where you think those two go. And it'll be like a game. Guess where they go, and then we'll put the dimensions in, and we'll see how close you were to the actual spot. And I'm going to put one about here, and another one about here. And we'll see. You might get much closer than me. So I'm going to click. I'm I chose dimension constraints or general dimensions. I clicked on my point and I'm going to click right on the far right end here. And this is 2.550. 2.550. So I was pretty close. 2.595. It was what I chose as a guess. And this is about one inch high. So we'll click that. We can click this bottom line here and pretty close again, 1.00. Your results may vary. Next, we need to size this piece, this point, directly above this line, this bottom line that we drew. Click there, and that was supposed to be 0 0.640. So I'm doing pretty good. And this point here and this right far right corner, we're measuring off of this far right lower corner there. The dimension for that was 3.010. There we go. Everything's adjusted. And we have our dimensions. And you should go back and forth. Double check that your dimensions here look just like the dimensions here in the document, 5.2, Introduction to CAD Modeling Skills. 
now that we have all these dimensions in place, now that we know that this point is here and this point is here, that they're in the correct location, we can go ahead and try something new. Make an arc. There are several different kinds of arcs. There's three-point arc, there's tangent arc, and there's center point. We want the three-point arc, which is the default arc. So you can just click on that uh, icon for arc. We're going to go get a green dot in the lower left-hand corner, click there, and we're going to go up to our point and click there. And a mistake the students will often do is they'll click on that and then they'll just leave their cursor right there. There's no arc, is there? There's no arc to be seen. And I'll tell them, you need to move to the middle. And they don't know what I mean. I mean the middle of the arc. We're drawing an arc from that point to this point down here. We can't stay at those points. It's a three-point arc. So those are the first two points. We need to move towards the middle. And we don't have to be exactly in the middle, but when the closer you are to the middle, where I am right now, the more fine-tuning, the easier it is to fine-tune uh, the size of your arc. So we're just going to type in, we know what size we want, um, so we're going to go with 6 inches. Not 600, but 6. That looks very good. So we're going to continue on. We're going to go back to that second point of that arc, click there, click there, and this one was 0 .400, if you remember and I hit enter. And then we have one more arc to draw. So we click there, we go all the way down to the lower right hand corner, click there, move back up to the middle, and by this point you probably notice that if you go too far, like this, and now I type in 6, I get something really really wrong, right? That's not going to work. We also don't want to go too far down here, then the arc bends the other direction. So we're just, just above horizontal, right? A straight line would be somewhere right about there where it switches from one to the other. Just go slightly above that and type in 6. We're good to go. And we right click and hit OK. Now this is very, very close to the right shape, but it's not quite right. That 6 inch arc, that four-tenths of an inch arc and that other six-inch arc, they look pretty good, but if we were to zoom in here, they're just not quite smooth enough that when we go to fillet this from here to here, it's not going to be able to resolve it. It's going to be a little bit upset with us. So let's take a look again at our front. When I hit front, it's pretty small because it's trying to show me this center point and this center point too, which I don't really need to see. So let's pick a, a zoom that's a little bit more detailed. We need to remove a couple of dimensions. So in your instructions, they actually demonstrate which dimensions they are. They're this one right here, the 2.550, and it's the one inch. Those are the two that we want to delete. Okay, and you'll see those right here. They show you that these are the ones to be deleted. What if you went too far? What if you deleted this 3.010? That wouldn't be too bad, or this 0 .640, that wouldn't be too bad. You, you'll you probably get, still get really good results. But if you delete our radiuses, our six inch, our four tenths of an inch, or this six inch, that would be bad. You're gonna get a, an odd shape and it's gonna cause problems. Also, don't delete this one, this 3.040. That's important. All right, so how do we delete? Well, I hover right over this, and you can see it turned red. I right click, and I choose delete. Another option would be for me just to click on that and choose the delete button from my keyboard. And that would also perform that function. So we need to smooth this out a little bit. It needs to get a little bit smoother, a little better continuity between these arcs. There is two different ways of doing this, smooth and tangent. Smooth smooths out, the, but it's going to make it too different. As you can see in this example, um, it creates too big a change. 
So that won't work for us. So we want tangent. And that's going to work much, much better for us. And it's a constraint, a geometric constraint that you're used to. So click on a curve and click on the curve that's adjacent to it. You can see there was a slight adjustment there. And now we again have to click a pair of curves. If we zoom in here, you can see this has gotten even worse. One is kind of overlapping the other here. There's a little bit of extra piece there. So we're going to click those two adjacent curves and make them tangent to each other. And there was a slight adjustment there. And you notice we have our two constraints showing, these two tangent constraints. That should be good. So we're going to finish the sketch. We'll zoom in just a little bit to have a little bit better detail. We're going to choose Extrude. And it defaults to one inch. We want 2.55 inches. And that's directly here from our instructions. 2.55 inches, and we click OK, and we're good to go. That concludes part one of the Automoblox T9 windshield block version. Thank you for watching.